Welcome back to Nuts and Bolts Torqued. Let's get further into rock hounding. Just before I do that though, I am going to take this apart as sad as it is and just put my bed straight on the ground so that we can avoid that spawning issue we had before where I died and had to respawn all the way back at my original spawn point. I have no idea how Minecraft detects whether the bed is safe or not. Obviously it's absolutely a terrible algorithm. But, fine, for now I'll just put it on the ground, sleep in the dirt. Not a bed in the dirt, but it, it's still in the dirt. Okay, so I have the stuff ready for everything that I want to make. Um, I guess the first thing I'll show you is just I'm making two more lab ovens, because I'm going to need four lab ovens in total. So, I've already made that before, but there's the other half. Uh, I'm also going to make the extractor, because apparently that is needed to make the sulfur from the gunpowder according to the infographic that I'm staring at right now on my other monitor from IC2 and I'm also going to need a source of water to supply the uh, lab oven so the uh, extractor I believe is going to supply sulfur to one of the lab ovens and then it also needs water the lab oven so I'm going to use something called an aqueous accumulator which um, I was actually surprised I could make it and it wasn't really too bad it's kind of a magic block. Basically, if you surround it with water, it will constantly generate an unlimited amount of water. Fairly slowly, I believe, because I don't... Is it... Actually, oh, never mind. Sorry, uh, a lot of the thermal expansion stuff has tiers and stuff. But this one doesn't say it's a basic or anything like that, so it actually might be fairly fast. I'm not sure. But yeah, this should fit our purposes. Um, tin gear, glass, and all that stuff's pretty simple. The redstone servo and... The other thing are not too hard, honestly. Had all of that. Device frame was the hardest part, just because I had to make a bronze gear and I had a... Actually... No, the bronze gear didn't require anything special, but actually, for some strange reason, the iron gear did. Like, the tin gear is made from just putting a basic gear in the center of a crafting grid <clears throat> and then putting tin around it. Uh, the bronze gear is made the same way, but for whatever reason, the iron gear is not you have to make a cast of a tin gear in the smeltery and then um, and then melt some iron and then pour it into the cast. So that one was a little bit strange, but anyway. There we go. So first things first, let's set up the extractor and see how this thing works. Hook it up with some power, give it some sulfur, see what it makes. Because I don't think it's going to make powdered sulfur, I think it's going to make something else. Um, where do I want to put this? I guess like here? Yeah, that should be fine. I don't feel like it should be out in the main spot. This is going to be all raw counting stuff. I feel like all the kind of um, extra back-end equipment should be kind of up on the wall or something like that. Put that there. I don't believe that... Where's the relay? Tin wire relay. There's no way the wire all the way over here is going to reach, so I'm going to have to put another pole down. Alright, we're going to have transmission loss. Um, it should be okay. Let's see how far this thing can go. Right about... Let's go here. Alright, it's getting power. Nice. Okay, so let's throw some sulfur in it and just see what the heck happens. Um, do I still have the sulfur on me? I guess I put it back. Oh, wait, I probably put it in this chest right here. <laughs> Never mind, I didn't. <laughs> oh, wait, no, sorry. Not not the sulfur. Um, gunpowder, and then it's supposed to turn it into sulfur. I've got gunpowder in here. That's not gunpowder. There's gunpowder. Okay, what do you make? God, you're slow. You're so slow. Ah, sulfur dust. It's 
So that is different from the sulfur that I had before that would not go in to the lab oven. So maybe the sulfur dust will. Can I just like shove it in? That doesn't go in. I don't know. Whatever. Let's keep moving for <laughs> forwards and we'll just see what happens. Maybe it needs like all the other pieces in place before it'll do it? I don't know. Or is there like a sulfur compound? Fluorite, sodium, oh, sulfur bearing compound. It's probably this, right? The chart just says sulfur, but I probably need to make this. Oh yeah, wow, look at this. So you can make it using different types of coal. Some of the fancier types. Not just normal coal, but yeah, the, the raw counting coal. But if you use it, if you make it using sulfur dust, you get so much more. This gives you four, this gives you two, this gives you 32. So three sulfur dust and a thingy. I can do that. So that can go in. Yes. Okay. So that's good. Now it, now it just needs water. Now I'm trying to think of where to put the aqueous accumulator exactly. It needs to sit in a pool of water, so I don't want it just like on the surface. It needs to be kind of buried, I guess. Um, I don't want it to look stupid. Let's see if this actually works. If I plop it in the center, is it going to generate water? Yeah, okay. Yeah, look at that. I mean, it's pretty fast. Yeah, I think that looks fine. That doesn't look silly. Okay, um, it should be pretty much that simple. We should be able to pump water out of the top now. So let's grab some extractors. Where's my item transfer nodes? Where's my fluid transfer nodes? There they are. So if I plop that on top, it should... Yep, it's sucking up fluid. So let's transport it over here. Thing should fill up with water. There we go. And it, since it's got power, now it's got water and sulfur brain compound. It should make, uh, what is it, hydrochloric acid? No, sulfuric acid. Right. Yep, and it does burn through really fast. I can't wait till I can supply these with RF and actually get a good RF system going, power generation system going, because otherwise my current system will just keel over and die. Alright, so that's one down. So I'm looking over at the list. Um, so the sulfuric acid apparently needs to be supplied to two other ovens. One oven that needs the sodium chloride compound, the stuff I already made. Did I shove it in here? Wait, sodium chloride compound. Oh no, I didn't make it yet. I gathered the salt for it, but I didn't make it. So yeah, the salt one needs salt combined with sulfuric acid to make hydrochloric acid. So, let's get that going. The only thing that's a little bit awkward about these pipes is I need to split the sulfuric acid between two different places, right? I don't think extra utility pipes can really do that. I don't know. It's hard to say because their behavior has probably changed since I last used them. Again, I'm pretty much completely unfamiliar with Extra Utilities 2. I'm used to the first one, which was quite a bit different. We'll see if it's a problem. I just don't want the sulfuric acid to all go to one and then go to the other. Which is most likely what it'll try to do. It'll probably try to fill up one until it's completely full, and then when it can't go in there anymore, then it'll go into the other. Um, anyway, we'll see. So, um... Transfer sulfuric acid out. Should go into there. There we go. Nice. That's kind of weird. It's kind of ugly. It's kind of really ugly. <laughs> I prefer that connected from the bottom, but um, if this whole thing works, I can maybe try to clean it up and put some of the connections under the floor, perhaps. We'll see. So, sulfuric acid, check, sodium chloride compound. Let's make that. I already had that up. Salt, chemical flask. Oops. Oh. 
Oh wow, that makes a bunch. I'll just make one stack then. Oh, um, it needs power as well. Of course. Yep, that's going to work. So that should make hydrochloric acid. And it does. Nice. Alright, so we also need to supply the sulfuric acid to another oven that takes the fluoride bearing compound. So fluoride bearing compound plus sulfuric acid. So let's put down another one. So... Need to disconnect these. Is that getting... Wait, what is it? Oh, it got water... Ah, oh, it was connected to the thing, so it got water in it. Ah, oh, crap. That's really annoying. Um, can I just, like, grab the water out? <laughs> I need some way to suck it out. I mean, I have a fluid tank. This could suck it out, but the problem is it's already got something in it. So, that's a problem. But it's got molten gold. Oh, oh, I can put molten gold in... Where am I going? In here. Why don't you... Oh, it's already on push. Oh, right, I can't push into there. I never explained that, um, I kind of messed up the design of this thing a little bit. I thought drains on the corner would function, but they don't. I meant this to be a 3x3, three three, but then I kind of built the on top of the 3x3 three three instead of on the outside of the 3x3, three three, therefore, therefore making it a 2x2 two two on the inside. Um, so only these two drains work. The corner ones do not. They're totally optional, they're not even, like, connected to the machine. All right, this should work. Push. There we go. Push you back. I'll turn those off. And this whole process is just to get some freaking water out of this thing. Wait, it was already on pull. You know what I probably could have done? I probably didn't have to do any of that. I probably just could have put um, a fluid transfer node, huh? No? How'd you get the water out? Does it disappear if you break it? I think, I'm pretty sure these things save their inventory, so if you place it down again... Oh. Huh. Okay. Right, well, that's empty now. This thing... Is it, oh, it's out of power. Okay, I'll supply it with a little bit more power. Let's see if it splits it between the two. I'm pretty sure it won't. Um... Yeah... Hmm. In the old version of Extra Utilities, you could put in like a round robin thing, which would make it distribute between the different ones, but there aren't many upgrades in Extra Utilities too. There's only an upgrade for a stack, the speed, a mining upgrade, and this is just a base that's required for all these other ones. So there's no round robin thing. I don't know if that means you do it in an alternative way now, or if you just can't do that anymore. Either way, this is indeed getting no sulfuric acid until this one is filled up, which is not the behavior I want. Ideally, I would use... Huh. I was gonna say, ideally, I would use the Ender IO conduits, which I'm sure that I can't make yet. But, actually, I don't think Ender IO conduits can do round-robin transfer. Um, not the fluid ones. The item ones can, but I don't think the fluid conduits can. Are there any conduits that allow you to split? 
the result evenly out? Hmm. I don't know of any conduits that can do that, actually. So I'm gonna do something different. Instead of having one pipe go to two different things, one pipe carrying the sulfuric acid to two different things, instead I'm gonna have one pipe carry to a tank and then two pipes extract out of that tank. And then therefore, if it if the tank receives 500 millibuckets of sulfuric acid, I believe if both if uh, you know both fluid extractors that are exporting out of the tank go at the same rate, which they should certainly, each one should export 250 millibuckets, and it should be even, I think. So let's just use this tank for that. Um, I guess I'll put it. I'll just put it right there. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, I really don't want that to fill up with water. <sighs> Rip. Okay, well, I think that's actually easy. I think I can... Alright. Whew. We did it. So that's set to pull from that side, which is good. That's stopped producing because it doesn't have any power. Yeah, we're going to need a lot of this fuel stuff. But at, from this point forwards, it should suck it out. So now I'm going to put two separate extractors on this thing. Yep. There's the sulfuric acid. For just now, I'm just going to disable both these sides just to make sure it doesn't send them out to the first one I connect to it. So I'll put a fluid extractor there and a fluid extractor there. <laughs> Better not have messed anything up. Now we're good. And then one to go here. Okay, and that should evenly distribute the sulfuric acid. Okay, so what was it? Sulfuric acid and... And fluorite bearing compound. That's this. So that, plus some power. And this one already has quite a bit of sulfuric acid, so I'm just gonna only enable the side I want for right now to get all of it out. It's pumping. Try to even it out a little bit. 900, 700... Okay. There we go, so now I should evenly distribute it from here on out, and that is making hydrofluoric acid. Okay, so we have the hydrochloric acid, the sulfuric acid, the hydrofluoric acid. Uh, now we need the syngas, which requires water and carbon compound. Where is my other lab? There you are. So we need water. Um, hmm, how do I route this? Up above, I guess? Yeah, alright. There. Damn it! <laughs> Wait, it just... What did it just pump water into? What did you do? Where did it go? It's... Oh, it's stuck inside of the transfer node. Alright, that's not too bad. Let me just... Do... This... And then, uh-uh, no, 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 bad. Wait, no. Wait, that's what I wanted. I'm trying to get water. What am I doing? Yes to that. No to that. Okay. Cable routing. Whew. Okay, this should get water now. It might take a little bit. The uh, extra utility cables are kind of slow by default. But they should get water eventually. Probably now. Yep. Okay. And that's good. This thing doesn't have any water in it. This thing needs to be broken. That'll empty out what it had in it, so the water will be gone. 
Eh. Okay, that's good. Everything's full of water too. Get out of there. There. Okay, we're good. Whew. Yeah, extra utility transfer pipes and stuff are pretty fiddly. Even in extra utilities too. The Ender IO stuff is a lot more user friendly. That stuff generally, when you place it down, it might connect automatically to things, but it's usually set up in a way that the default settings make it do nothing. So you don't have annoying stuff like this where you place it down and it's like, oh my god, I've got water and everything now. Okay, so now it needs carbon compound. Hmm, this one looks different. Oh, it's made from cracked coal compound. Hmm. This seems pretty expensive, actually. Three pieces of coal to make one of these, and you need four of these to make a single carbon compound. Alright. Should have a decent amount of coal now, I think. Yeah. So a flask plus a bunch of that makes a bunch of that. Five carbon compound. So that should do it, except I need power, and I don't think I have any power stuff. Any power juice left, do I? No, I don't. What was it to make that? Because I need to make, like, a bunch of it. Bunch of red coal, so I need a lot of coal and redstone. Ah, right, that's one of the things I was getting was a bunch of redstone. I got that in between episodes. I've got 281, not bad. Take a stack of that. Take the rest of the coal. Let's take a couple stacks of this. I'm going to make a lot of this stuff. So let's make a crap ton of that. And then I need glowstone and ember shards. Start some ember shards in here. Glowstone. Okay. Oh, so much I couldn't even fit it all. Let me just do this. There we go. Magically frees up space. I love that. Come here. Okay, let's give these things some power. Boop. So that should fire up, and that should make Syngas. There we go. Okay, so we're making the four basic compounds that we need. Hydrochloric acid, sulfuric acid, hydrofluoric acid, and syngas. And according to the graft, we need to take graft. According to the graph, we need to take hydrofluoric acid and syngas and send it to the chemical extractor. Mm, it says we also need to send everything but the syngas to the mineral analyzer. There's the mineral analyzer. Have I even looked at this thing? What does it look like? I don't even know what this thing does. But um, yeah, apparently it needs everything but the syngas, so it needs to be hooked up to these three. Alright. Uh, I guess that kind of has to go in front, huh? Let's put it there real fast and disconnect it. Boop. Alright. Um, yeah, this needs more compound or it's not going to make any more sulfuric acid. But I'll deal with that in a, just a minute. So that should transfer. Yep, hydrochloric acid already built up. Sulfuric acid not built up. Hydrofluoric acid, let's grab that. There we go. Alright, sulfuric acid. 
sulfur compound. Actually, I don't even need to look it up. I know what it is. It's this plus these. Alright, that should do it. Uh, it's going to get all three, and it looks like what it wants here, if I had to guess, is a test tube. I don't know what that actually does, but yeah. Alright, that's what goes there. It needs power, of course. I don't know what these are for. So now that it's got fluids, is it going to do something? <laughs> it's got over a thousand millibuckets of everything. I don't see anything happening, though. So there's something missing. Oh, you need to analyze something, don't you? It's a mineral analyzer. I guess you need a mineral to analyze. I guess these are all just the things needed to actually do the analyzing, but I still need the sample. I have no idea at all where to get these things. I think it generates the shard after you analyze it. Comes from the mineral sizer. Yeah, so I've seen this pop up a couple times, this uninspected mineral, but I don't know where to find it. Oh, well, you can craft it. <laughs> oh, you need a Terra Steel Nugget. That is not happening for a long time. That's pretty far into Batania. Starlight Transmutation. Oh! Just using gravel. In a starlight transmutation, you could turn it into uninspected mineral. I don't know how hard the starlight transmutation is, but it wouldn't surprise me if that's how you're intended to do it in the early game. That's part of the magic mod, um, Astral Sorcery, I think. Hmm. Uh, but anyway, I don't think we need to do that. I don't think we actually need to use the mineral analyzer to do what I want to do. I think. Um... Let's hook it up to the chemical extractor. Right, so the chemical extractor needs syngas and hydrofluoric acid, so it needs these two. Whoo, look at that. That's a lot of things. Okay, should receive... Both. It's getting the synga syngas. I think I'm out of hydrofluoric acid. Yes. Um, I need fluorite compound. How is that made? Ah, right. Granite. There's oh, there's probably more in here, huh? Yeah. This thing just ran out of power. Let's put some more in there. Okay. Um. It says that's all it needs, although it also mentions it should get a shard from the mineral analyzer. Hmm. So I don't know if this is actually going to do anything right now. Uh, it looks like there should be a test tube in there as well. Yep. Got the two things. Oh, right, it needs power. Okay, it's got power, it's got a test tube, it's got things. Um, I don't know what to do now. I kind of almost forgot what the point of all of this was. I know I was trying <laughs> to get the metal alloy working, and I think I could have gotten the metal alloy working without doing any of this, but um, I think the big... Oh, let's not connect it to that. I think the big thing I wanted to do is get the metal alloy working without having to use this compound. I wanted to switch it over to RF. Which required this thing, which required nichrome, which required the metal alloy, required chromium dust, which apparently is made in the chemical extractor, as it says. Chromium dust. But I don't actually need to do that to get the metal alloy working. So, maybe I won't? It looks like I need to send minerals. 
yeah, I need the uninspected minerals to send to the mineral analyzer, I think, to generate shards, and then I think I need to put the shards inside of the chemical extractor, and I think that would go here, and then I think it would generate different compounds for me. So in other words, I think all of this here is actually useless for right now, but it was very satisfying to do it, and trust me, it will be important later once I get the uninspected minerals. I mean, I could try to rush astral, astral sorcery and do the transmutation thing. I don't know. I've never played astral sorcery before, so I'm not sure whether that would be difficult or not. So the main point of this was a long-winded way of finally getting to the tool forge, the level, uh, the tier two tinker's tools. The one thing I'm missing from that is mana glass. For that, I need to get into Batania, and to get into Batania, uh, one of the things I need to be able to make is the mana spreader, which requires rose gold ingots, which is made in the metal alloyer. So I don't, um, let's just try to make this. I think I've got all this stuff ready for it. Let's just see if this works. So apparently it needs an ingot pattern. Not too hard, just some iron stuff. And then five gold, three copper, or one silver. Doesn't matter what form it's in, as long as it's some sort of like crushed dust form. Let's see if, oh, no, 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 no. I was starting to process before I put everything in. Wait. Hmm. Why doesn't it want to take it? Copper? Copper dust. Right? Copper dust from Industrial Craft 2. Crushed. Copper ore. Hmm. That's not copper dust. Huh. Is there an easy way to make it? using stuff I can do right now. I can make copper grit using ore and an engineer's hammer, but I need the original ore itself. Do I have any? It's very particular about what kind it wants. I, if I just threw everything inside of the crusher, the big multi-block immersive engineering structure that I intend to make quite soon, then it wouldn't be a problem. No, I don't keep my copper. I just throw it all in to be processed. Huh. So I can't even make it. I can't even make the right form of copper. You know what we can do, though? Put those back in and see what the heck it's going to make. What is it making? Oh, Electrum, right. Silver and gold. Hmm. Cube ingot. Can make all sorts of strange stuff. <laughs> Bam ingot? <laughs> What's that used for? Bam block. Bam dust. What's Bam dust used for? It's used for nothing. It's useless. Hmm. Anyway, well, alright. So, long story short, I guess I should kind of sum it all up, because I've been doing a lot of stuff. All the stuff in the back is very good to get done, because I will definitely need that later, and it's all out of the way. But I'm just waiting on getting further in something like Astral Sorcery, or or maybe even some other way. If I, if I get later into the game where I can make Terra Steel, I'll be able to make the uninspected um, ore, or whatever it was called, and then I could start this whole process going. But regardless of this stuff in the back, I still can do the Middle Alloyer without it to get the stuff I need to get into Batania, but before doing that, um, it honestly would just be best and simplest just to make the Crusher from Immersive Engineering. It's more efficient at crushing ores, it's faster, and gives me the right form of dust that I need to use a metal alloy or properly. So I should get into that. Um, but before doing that, I really need to upgrade the power system. I need more power than just a single water wheel. And I feel like taking a break from the rock hounding and stuff. And in fact, I'm actually going to take a break before getting into upgrading the power system. So first thing I want to do is just some odds and ends. Just some general cleanup. For example, one thing I want to do is expand the farm. 
it's pretty jam-packed right now, and I want to put in those new... Uh, remember those new things I found a while ago from the, like, frozen something garden? Yeah, I want to put those in. And also, I found a place really, really close to our base that has a bunch more frozen gardens. So I'm going to go raid those as well. So I'm going to expand this to, I don't know, maybe double its current size. Which also means I'm going to have to get a bunch more worms. Farm has been extended. I think it's roughly double the size. I decided to go for a less boxy appearance and try to make it look more natural, more rounded. You know, it's not as efficient of a use of space, but I think it looks better. And rather than try to cut out just like more and more of the ground to try to make this whole thing level, I'm going to try building up the garden as I kind of go inland. Make it go on to different levels. And I'm going to put some sort of a staircase or something along here. So that it doesn't look so odd. And so you don't have to jump up. Because you really don't want to be jumping on crops. If you jump on tilled land, it untills it. Thankfully the worms put it back pretty quickly. But yeah, you don't want to be having to jump around your crops. You don't want to be having to jump around your crops. Actually, that is grammatically correct, isn't it? Yeah. Alright. I'm gonna go get worms. I've got 39 worms. Should be plenty. So I was thinking, what if instead of doing, like, stepped stairs, what if I try using carpenters, or architecture craft, um, like roof tiles to make a, a ramp? Let's try it. Let's see how it looks. I can't wait to play these, place these worms down. So satisfying. I'm not even going to be careful about where I place them. It's fine. I'll leave them to go to work and then see if I missed any spots. Ah, look at him go. <gasps> I ran out. Bah, bah. That's so sad. Anyway, let's see how these look. Of course. There we go. Mm. I don't... No, it looks terrible, because when you till the ground, it actually goes below the block level just slightly. So, there's like that little lip. That just looks weird. Nah, it's no good. Okay, well, I'll figure out something else. But, before I worry about that, let's go see what kinds of stuff we can find from those frozen shaded gardens. I think they were over in this direction, kind of like right in between the tundra and the grass. There's a bunch of, bunch of like, grassy shaded gardens right over here, and then a bunch of frozen ones just across the way. Yep, you can see right where they change. Normal shaded gardens, and then frost gardens. Look at how many. Oh, let's get them all. <clears throat> get them all. That should be every single variety that exists and Frost Gardens and Pam's Harvest Craft. And I've already searched so many of these shaded gardens that I don't think there's any point in looking at those. Pretty sure I've gotten all the varieties of shaded gardens. And I wonder how many different types of gardens there are. There's shaded, there's frosted. Any others? Alright, let's take a look. And let's get planting. Oh, I should probably take the ones out of my backpack as well. There we go. So we got raspberry, mmm. Oats, 
rye, rutabaga, or rutabaga, rutabaga, celery, broccoli, cauliflower, spinach, peas, and cotton? I know I've gotten that before. Beets. Oh, okay, so there's uh, Pam's Harvest Craft beets, instead of just the normal vanilla beets. And cabbage. Okay, I'm gonna get to planting. All planted. Only used up about maybe a third of the new farmland that I made. So plenty of room for more varieties. Can't wait to see what I can bake with them. Another thing I'd like to do is fill up the sink infinitely. So I guess I want to make another aqueous accumulator and probably stuff it underneath the house and pipe it up to the sink, I guess. Yeah. There we go. Got another aqueous accumulator. Let's go install that. The question is, how am I going to make it look good? <laughs> um, I'm definitely going to come from underneath the floor. Just going to cut these out. I guess... I guess I'll just put it right, right here underneath the floorboards, huh? You'll probably be able to see through a little bit. Well, you'll see how it looks. Should we get water? Yes. Hook this thing up. Hook up to that. I'm assuming you can pump into it. Let's... Yep, it's being filled up slowly. Yeah, it's kind of floating there. Because it takes up the whole block space. Dang. Oh, well, uh, I guess I'm just going to have to live with it. There's... The only alternative would be to go through the back wall. Which would look better on the inside, but it would look worse on the outside. Actually, I don't even know if it would look better on the inside. Then there would just be a hole there. See, once we get into Ender I.O., this won't be much of a problem. Because the Ender I.O. conduits, you can make facades for them. That um, basically allow you to make it look as if a different type of block is there instead of the cable. It basically hides the cables. So that'll be super nice. Alright, that's fixed. Uh, I'm going to go fix the stair problem at the farm, using chisel and bits. I'm going to replace all of this here with dirt so that it doesn't poke through. Since this farmland here is a little bit down, don't want it to poke through. And let's try to chisel this. So I guess I'm trying to make this look a little bit finer. I'll do it in fourths, not half size. Wait. Oh, because it got tilled, I can't... I can't do it anymore. No! Damn you, worm. You're too effective. Alright, so I gotta chisel this really fast. No! I need to chisel it before I can do it. Switch it to fourth. Okay, there we go. Now I can't do it. So let's get this looking right. Okay, yeah, so now that's all good, except for the very top. I want to just remove this layer up here so it brings it to the level of this farmland on the left side. Connected plane. Boop. There we go. Yeah. Now, let's make a copy of this. And then paste it. Oop. Damn worms. Stop it. Okay. 
Okay, not the prettiest looking thing, but it's not bad. It works. You can run up and run down, and you're not going to ruin the farmland down here by, like, falling onto it, jumping on it. It does look a little bit strange that it doesn't match the, like, dark, rich texture of everything around it. It's just kind of that dry dirt. Hmm, I, I can't think of a better solution, though. Yeah, I'm just going to stick with it. It's good enough. I just continued this pathway a little bit down, so it's no longer sand all the way here. Let's actually make this dirt, too. Yeah, so that continues down, and I put this one dirt block here, so this will be the bridge between the grass and this. So it'll spread here, and then it'll slowly spread to the rest of it. And then I can turn it into pathway, just like this stuff. Alright, looking nice. Oh, you know what we can do? I think all the stuff that I've planted has sprouted, pretty much, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna go collect it all and see what we can make, now that we have unlimited water and new crops. Let's see. That'll be all sorts of new stuff. Or not? <laughs> I don't see a single new thing. I wonder if I just need to make like a lot of things. Like what if I just make a bunch of... Oh, there's veg veggie strips. Those are things I really wanted to make, but I was sad that they didn't have any nutritional value technically. Steamed spinach, steamed peas. Yeah, salt opened up a lot of things. Let's make a bunch of salt. What did I run out of? Oh, I ran out of water. It's slowly refilling. So yeah, so that opened up steamed spinach and veggie strips, steamed peas, rice soup. Rice soup is pretty nutritious. I mean, it doesn't have any nutrients, but like uh, in terms of how much it gives you. Fruit salad is still looking pretty attractive. Let's make a bunch of dough. That's probably going to allow me to make some cool stuff. We're not out of water. What did I run out of? I made it so I can't make dough anymore. With that, we can make bread. Oh, yeah, that requires cooking. Which, I actually put some coal in there, so it's actually going. Let's make some ketchup. Oh, we can make toast now. Grain, 3.5%, and it restores a pretty good amount of stuff. Ooh. Ooh. We can make actually additions toast as well, which is absolutely terrible, man. The nutrition on that is just garbage. So wait, do you make bread and then it allows you to make toast? Is that how it works? Let's see if it appears. Is it done? Yeah. Yeah, it's cooking the bread. Can we, like, cut it and make sandwiches out of it? Out of the toast or something? I mean, you wouldn't cut toast. I don't know. I, I don't really know what this is. It says toast, but it looks like an entire loaf of bread, so I'm kind of confused. Like, is it a slice of bread, or is it a toasted loaf of bread? <laughs> I don't know. Let's make some veggie strips. Oh, toast sandwich. Sure. None of the stuff has good nutrition at all. None of it has any nutrition at all. I'm making straight up garbage. Edible roots. Sure. Garden soup. Steamed pea, steamed spinach. I'm just making a bunch of stuff to see if other things appear. I don't know, not much is appearing still. I figured by now I would have come up with a lot of staple things, but so far it really seems like the best things to eat at the moment are just fruit salad, very good healing and 3% fruit per each one, and a cup of tea. Not very good healing, but it gives you 2% vegetable with each one, which is great. Um, I suppose... I suppose the toast would be good as well. Um, I can't make any more bread, but uh, the toast would definitely be good to have, because that gave you, what, 3% grain and also a good amount of food? 
So that would take care of three of my five nutrients. Everything but protein. I still need soy for protein. And actually, and soy for dairy as well. So that would that would be my staple food for everything but dairy and protein. Until I find soy. But still, there's so many more things. Like, look at this. Look at all these things. Why can't I make them? What am I missing? Well, that's meat, but... Hmm. Don't know. This stuff looks so delicious, but it's also taking up so much inventory space. Anyway, let's do some more tidying up. Um, let's make a little pathway up to those portals. There, I cleared out a whole line of podzel and replaced it with dirt all the way up here so that the grass can spread and I can eventually turn it into a path. I also placed a bunch of torches off to both sides of the path so it seems kind of lit. Not quite so gloomy. Now let's clean up this area here. I've got, I still have these old chests, most of which have kind of like little bits of stuff, most of which is just garbage. And then also these here, which are ugly and need to be moved, so let's just move all this. Alright, cleaned all that up, and I also replaced all of this puzzle with dirt. I think it'll look a lot better when this whole, like my whole main base is just all grass. The puzzle is, to be honest, kind of ugly. Get out of here. Yeah, so after a little bit of time, this stuff will look really good. Grass should spread pretty quickly because it's coming in from all different directions. Ah, I really would like to finish this roof, but... I don't think I have enough wheat. I'll go check. I used about two and a half stacks of bone meal just on the wheat. Let's see how far we can get. 22 pieces. That is definitely not enough. Hmm. But you know what? We can do it. Let me go see how many bones I've got waiting for me. Although then again, I do have to wait for them to macerate. I have to macerate the bones to turn them into bone meal and it takes a long time. So satisfying. Yeah, we got about a stack of bones just from that. Um, well, I do still have, actually, I think I have a couple stacks of bone meal still waiting for me, so I'll start these macerating and then use up a couple more stacks. Well, in the interest of macerating the bones quicker to be able to get more wheat faster, I was going to make some upgrade, uh, some overclock upgrades. I made the insulated copper cables and the electronic circuit. I just need to make the coolant cells, which basically comes from just empty cells that you fill with water, which takes a bunch of tin item casings, so I was putting that through the metal former. And this really drives home the fact that I definitely need to upgrade my power system. Just running two machines at the same time was enough to basically just kill the power system. Now they're both just chugging along, just barely going anywhere, especially this one. There, after all that time, it it's rolled four item, ten item casings. I can make like one coolant cell. <laughs> yeah, so there's no point in even making the overclocker thing, because it makes it so it... The machine process is faster, but it uses more power. Well, there's no power to use. So, unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to finish this today, but I can put 11 more pieces up here. Alright. Yeah, more than halfway done. About 60% done. Well, I think I'll end this episode here, so I hope you've enjoyed so far. And when I return, I'm going to do a bit of an overhaul on the power system, get some more power going so I can actually run these machines, get some overclocker upgrades so the macerator runs faster, complete this roof, thanks to all the bones that I'll macerate, and then, I'm not sure, maybe move on to something else. <laughs>